Uh, and we're also going to focus on uh, grammar today. Our lessons vary uh, between vocabulary lessons, uh, then one day we'll have a grammar, then one day it's oral based, uh, sometimes writing focus, uh, but we do have grammar uh, at least once a, um, per unit. So I thought we would do a grammar class today. I know it's uh, a lot of fun, but it's very important grammar. So it's a good one to do. Uh, so my name is Veronica. Uh, I have been teaching ESL here with Canaway for quite some time, uh, and it's great to see so many new possible students. <laughs> All right, so the class today uh, will be all about modals uh, and using expressions for advice, suggestions, and expectations. So I would love to have some of you join in as our class is um, quite interactive. So we like to have lots of uh, interaction and raising your hand and joining in and trying your best. Uh, if you are a little shy, please go ahead and send me a message in the chat box. Uh, I'd be happy to read your answer or answer your question. Otherwise, please join in as much as you can. Um, raise your hand and try your best. Uh, we're all going to try to answer questions and practice using the words and grammar we learned today, as that is the best way um, to learn your grammar, really. Okay. So if at any point you have a question, please um, raise your hand and ask, okay? At any point, don't worry at all. This is a class catered for you. And also this uh, is a class meant for an hour and a half. However, we will be shortening it today to 45 minutes. So we might uh, go through a few of the activities a little quickly. Otherwise it would be nice and slow and we would do everything uh, that you see today. So let's jump in we will be making sure we are able to use various different modal words and expressions to give advice and give suggestions about the present or the past, as well as express regret or criticism for the past, and even talk about the future and giving suggestions or advice about the future as well. Okay, so in class, of course, today, just enjoy and try to jump in and learn and practice and uh, try your best. But in a normal class, it is very important to take notes, um, of course, because we will be using it throughout our course. All right, so let's start with a warm up here. I, I wish, am going on vacation and I can go to Paris or I can go to the Caribbean. So what do you guys think? Where should I go? Does anyone want to give a suggestion and a reason why? So if you would like to uh, jump in and give me your answer, you can raise your hand or just, uh, okay, great. Uh, Guisela, I hope I'm saying that right. That if I were you, I would like to go to Caribbean. Caribbean. Yeah, Caribbean. Okay. Is the comparison okay of the sentence? Absolutely. If I were you, I would go to the Caribbean. Yeah, that was very good. That was excellent. Um, okay, excellent answer. Uh, anyone else? Does anyone else have another suggestion? Everyone agrees with Caribbean? How about the, how about Paris? Does anyone think I should go to Paris? Hmm, how about, um, I, know I don't wanna call anyone who's a little too shy. Please feel free to write me privately if you'd like. Oh, you should go to um, Paris. Yes, absolutely, both sound lovely. <laughs> okay, so as we saw there in the little warm up question, um, we are giving advice here. So that's our focus for today. We're going to look at lots of different modals uh, when we do this today uh, and make sure we understand how to use them, all of them, okay? So let's start with these ones here. Should, ought to, had better, and to be supposed to do something. So we're going to look at these to begin. 
So these modals uh, or expressions are used to give advice or suggestions. So I like to say um, advice is a very good one for this one. Uh, about present, so what you should do now or should do in the future. Now, in terms of the grammar, they're all the same. You don't change these modals themselves if it's the future. The only thing you would change would be the context. So for example, I'll write some examples here. You should study English. There you go. So there's just a present simple sentence. If I want to talk about tomorrow or any type of future, I don't actually change it to will, should, or anything like that. I would just change the context. You should study uh, English tomorrow, for example. So it's the context that um, that would change it to the future tense in these words. All right. So um, we also can use these to show regret or talk about the past actions, like I should have done something. That is a little trickier. We're going to get to that uh, a little bit later on today in our lesson. Uh, we also can use this to express expectations in the past or the future. So we're going to break these down a little bit more and look at how we use these grammatically and in what type of situations and how serious the situation would be. Uh, so, uh, and please, if I'm going too quickly or if you have a question, do not be shy and feel free to ask me. Okay, so let's look at two that would be equal in terms of the seriousness, and that is should and ought to. They're the same, total synonyms, just some are used in different parts of the world, of the English speaking world. So we use um, should when we want to make advice or suggestions. Now these ones, uh, we use should and ought to if it's something that is important, some kind of advice, but it's not extremely important like you must. It's a little bit less. So if you say you should or ought to do something to someone, it means that I think it is important for you to listen to me, but it's still your choice. So let's talk about should. Uh, this is honestly the one I use the most. Uh, in my personal day-to-day -day life. So should is much more commonly used in North America. So it's used for the present and the future. As I showed you earlier, you should do this now, you should do this tomorrow. We don't actually change the grammar, we just change the context to the future or when in the future. We can use it in the affirmative, so positive or negative, and they are equal in seriousness. You should um, you should exercise every day. You should not eat too much sugar. So we can use them in positive or negatives. And they're both equal in seriousness. Um, all right, and we have a couple of structures. You should do something in terms of the base form, or you should progressive be doing something. Now, when we use the progressive, it's often used in the direct present, like you should be listening to me right now. So we use this for the exact uh, present moment. Well, this one is a little bit more present or general present or future. So here are a few examples of the present um, and future and even questions in both structures. Would anybody like to read these for us? Do I have any volunteers? Me. Okay, go ahead. Why don't you Hello. read those sentences? Yeah, go ahead. You should eat now. You okay. should be eating now. You shouldn't eat now. You shouldn't be eating now. You should, should he eat now? Should he be eating now? Perfect. And good intonation on the questions. Very well done and thank you. So these are all obviously now, this is the present. The only real difference here is that be eating or be doing something in the progressive is more immediately like right this moment. Well, present simple can just be like, you should do this now. Well, right now you should be doing this as we speak. So this one is just a little bit more directly the present moment. Usually I say this when someone is doing something wrong. 
like you should be listening, that type of thing. All right, so ought to uh, would be equal to should. Uh, we also use it for advice. Um, we use it for something that's serious, but you still have a choice and it's used for present and future. Um, negative and questions are not used in North American English. It's more British, but in all honesty, even the word ought to in the positive is not very often used in um, North American English. This is mostly British English or it's in North America or in Canada. I would say this very formally. So ought to as a Canadian <laughs> sounds uh, British or it sounds very formal. So it's something you can use if you're being very polite. All right. So, guys, if you are not going to join in, can you please keep yourself on mute? All right, I'll just take a look at a lot of you here. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, all right. So here are some examples of the positives and negatives and questions. And the negatives and questions are definitely only British English. Okay, does anyone want to read these examples for us? Volunteers. Everyone shy? Three, two, one. Hugo, would you like to go? Yes. Go ahead. Examples. You out to eat now? You out to be eating now it's like an ah uh, ought to ought to uh, ought to yeah you ought you ought to eat now you ought to be eating now you ought not to eat now you ought not to be eating now out he to eat now out he to be eating now Good, very good, yes. So this is like an ah sound, like ah, oh my God, ah. <laughs> so just ought, ought. Yeah, it's a weird, weird spelling. <laughs> um, yeah, very good. So it's the same as should, exactly the same, um, except it's just British English or very formal. Any questions so far? Good. Well done. Okay. So let's take a look at had better and supposed to. So had better, you had better do something. This is uh, same as should, it's used for advice or um, very strong suggestions, but it's much stronger. So I say you had better when you don't really have a choice or if there is a bad consequence. So you had better study for your test tomorrow or you will do bad on the test, or you had better exercise, or you will feel bad. So if you say had better, it means that there's a consequence if you don't listen. So it's very serious. Same structure, you had better do something, or you had better be doing something. So same thing as should, this one here, progressive is ing. You had better be doing something. So anytime something is progressive, it means the ing. Uh, if you're using had better be doing, it just means right this exact moment. So it's a little bit more exactly present than the base verb. Usually I would say this one when someone is in trouble. <laughs> you had better be cleaning your room up there, that type of thing. So it means right this exact second. So here are some examples. Um, uh, I think maybe I'll quickly read these just so we can get through this a bit quicker. So we'd or we had better leave now or we'll be late. So that's the consequence. We will be late if we don't leave. We'd better be leaving now or we'll be late. We'd better not leave now because it's raining. So same thing, it could also be a negative, but it would just be used in a negative situation with a negative type of consequence. So we should do something or else this will happen. We should not do something or else this will happen. So had better has a consequence. We'd better not be leaving now because it is still raining. Uh, and a question, had we better leave now or had we better be leaving now? These honestly are not really used as questions in Canada very often. I actually don't think I would ever say these in a question. 
it's um, more British English when you use it as a question. But in a sentence, negative or positive, it's fine in both. And be supposed to is slightly different from the others that we've looked at. So be supposed to uh, shows expectation, what should be happening now or what should happen in the future. Same structure, be supposed to with the base form verb or the progressive. So I'm just gonna go through a couple of these. We're supposed to stop here. We're supposed to be stopping here. Aren't we supposed to stop here? Or aren't we supposed to be stopping here? So the progressive is more immediate present and it's just showing expectation. It's not really strong or not. It's just saying, hmm, why is this not happening? Isn't this supposed to happen? It's more of an expectation. Okay, any questions so far? We're good, all right. So let's do an activity. See if we can match the, sent the clause on the left with the matching second part on the right. So you guys should be able to draw on the screen. Uh, and if you can, you can draw a line to where you think it matches. So for example, You'd better be home by 10. Anyone have an idea of what could go next? Hmm, so read the whole context here. Or I think this one matches the best. Or you won't be allowed to use the car again. So we know that that's the same other half because one, we have the same subject, you, you. And also, you'd better is serious, so it has a consequence. And this is a consequence. If you don't come home by 10, no more car for you. All right, so let's try the next one. Whoever is making the salad, anyone think they can see the second part of the sentence? Please put a lot of fresh tomatoes in it. Very good. I'm actually going to change this. I'm actually going to write the letters next to it just because it might get really messy. So I changed my mind. All right. Very good. Where's the tomatoes? F. Very good. Well done. All right. Number three, we ought to pay attention to our mistakes. A, because we can't learn from them. Very good, excellent, A, well done. And I see a question in the chat box. Whoever means any person. Mm -hmm. Like whoever cleans my dishes, please use the soap. So that means any person who do does this, please use the soap. So whoever is just an abstract person. Whoever asked that question. Okay, good. Uh, aren't we supposed to finish the first part? H, before we begin the second part. Yeah, the context kind of gives that away. Well done. Very good. Good job, David. Uh, you'd better not overwater the plant. Or it will die. Or it will die. It is the subject for the plant. Yeah, very good. Okay. We should buy more potatoes. So look at the subject as well. And should does not have a, a big consequence. It just might have a reason. Um, yes, very good. Oh, I see some of you writing the answers in the chat box. Sorry if I'm too slow. Because we, oh, very good. Because we only have two left. Please feel free. Good, thanks, Gianna, as well. Good, you're right. Uh, because we only have two left. So we and we, that's just a little trick. So we can see the subject is, so where are we? Yeah, the subject is the same. Um, and there's no consequence. It's just uh, something that, it's an advice. Okay, since the rain hasn't stopped all day. See? Yeah, yeah I see lots of, you guys are doing great. Yeah, they'd better cancel the game for tonight. Yeah, so they had better. Um, they had better do something because there's a consequence if they don't. It's raining. Very good. So it's more serious. Um, she should apologize right away. 
because her comment was totally unacceptable. Well done. She and she as well. Very good. And should will often have a reason as well. So it is fair to say because after you say should. If he really wants to get that job, good, you guys are so fast. He should prepare carefully for the interview. And last one, you ought to be listening to this music. If you want to relax, yeah, very good. Thanks, Marissa. Well done. Okay, guys, fantastic. Thank you, everyone, for sharing your answers. You did that so well. Good work. Okay. So let's take a look at the past uh, using regret or criticism. So sometimes we can also use should or ought to to talk about something that we regret or we wish did not or wish did happen in the past. So we would have to use should plus the present perfect. So present perfect can be hard for some people. So that is using have or has, depending on the subject. I have, you have, he has, she has, so on, plus the past participle. So in case you guys aren't super familiar with the past participle, that is the third column verb. If you study your grammar verbs that way, so for example, um, for irregular verbs, they often change. So for instance, do, yeah, did, done, or eat, ate, eaten. So the past participle would be these verbs here. If it's a regular verb, I call them easy verbs because they end in ed, so they're easy, like work and worked, it actually stays the same. So it doesn't change. So I have worked. So that would be what a present perfect is. So that might be a little bit trickier than what we've been doing. So we use this structure to talk about the past that we regret or criticism of the past. So here are a couple of examples. Um, would anyone like to read these for us? Anyone? A lot of you guys participate. Oh, okay, very good. Um, go ahead. I don't see a name, just numbers. So why don't you go ahead and read that? Sorry, it's nine eight nine four six three nine five four. I'm sorry, you raised your hand. Go ahead. I'm. I don't see a name. So please, go ahead and read. Arturo. Arturo. Go ahead. Uh, oh, hello. Can, yeah. Yes. Do you go ahead? I can hear you now. Do you want to read hello, these sentences? Good. Thank okay. You. Examples. He should. He, he should have stayed longer. He shouldn't have stayed so long. Shouldn't he have stayed longer? Perfect. Good. So these are regrets. So uh, like, oh, I should have studied harder, or I should have um, uh, not eaten that yesterday, something like this. So when we regret the past, we have to use the structure. And it's the exact same thing with ought to, just it's more British. So we don't really say it too often as well. Um, but it, it is more formal or British English. Um, I would love a reader again. I, I think it was uh, Jusela. Do you want to go ahead? I'm sorry, can you tell me how to pronounce your name? Guisela? Is it Guisela? Guisela. Okay, Guisela, do you want to read the ought to examples? He ought to have stayed longer. He ought, he ought not to have stayed so long. Ought he not to have stayed longer. Perfect. Good work. Thank you very much uh, for both of you guys for reading. Um, perfect. So yes, these are the exact same, except ought to is just more formal or British. Um, Arturo, do you have a question or is your hand still up? No, not really. No. no. Nothing. Oh, okay. So I'll lower no, your hand. It's sorry. okay. Good. I'll lower your hand. I just wanted to double check. Sorry. That's no, no, no worries. Just checking. Okay. Um, so now let's move on to be supposed to. So supposed to is also used about expectation in the past. So something that um, was should have happened but didn't or should not have happened but did. So be supposed to and the present perfect. So we have a few examples as well. Um, I will give, read these for us. So he was supposed to have stayed longer means that he didn't stay longer, but maybe I wish he did or I thought he did. 
He wasn't supposed to have stayed longer. That means that he did stay longer than I thought or that I expected. Maybe I'm not happy about it. <laughs> Was he supposed to have stayed longer? So in a question form. So that is about unfulfilled expectation about the past. We okay so far? Great, okay. Um, so let's just try to practice some of our um, present perfect and see if we can read these sentences using the grammar correctly. Oh, tricky. So for instance, I do number one, shouldn't he have applied earlier since there were only two vacant, vacant positions? So I have to say, shouldn't he have applied in this case? Very good. Um, all right, so for this one, uh, just because it'll get a little bit messy if everyone's writing, you can write the grammar in the chat box, or I would really love it if you would just read the sentence completely. So does anyone want to tell us what they think number two would be? Okay, Gianna. Um, yes, okay, thank you. Number two, that was a terrible thing to do. He shouldn't have done it. Perfect. Have done it. Well done. Okay, number three. Yeah, I want to try that one. Sigue nomás que va a escuchar una clase de inglés. Oh, guys, keep yourself on mute. <laughs> Anyone else want to give that a try? What about number three? Do you want me to go ahead for you? Borrow is a regular verb. So he ought, sorry, she ought to have borrowed money from the bank rather than him. Okay, number four. Someone was supposed to. Anyone want to try using the present perfect? You can also write the answers if you'd like. Okay, oh, we have a couple of uh, Angela. Uh, okay, someone was supposed to have cleaned Perfect. the kitchen with, why is it still dirty? Perfect, good, exactly. Well done, cleaned is a regular verb. Okay, number five, Arturo. Number five, oh no, this is a disaster. I should have put a cover on the pan before I put it in the oven. Perfect. Very good. Okay, let's just do one more. Number six. Anyone? Let's get someone new to try. Me. Okay, go ahead. There are only four available seats left. They should have sped a lot more people. Good. Expect it. Yeah, okay. Very good. Well done. Good job. Okay. I think we'll finish up with these examples. Very good job, everyone. And thank you to everyone who volunteered to go. All right. We're going to jump ahead now and just do this activity here, giving advice to people in different situations. All right. So um, I think they did this one here as an example. So we have some advice to give to these people in these situations. So number one is already done. There are two examples here. So first, you should have asked your bank in advance if they would give you a loan for a new car. I think this means he's shopping for a car. Or you ought to think about buying a used car. Used cars are cheaper. So there's a nice uh, example or some advices for number one, or pieces of advice, I should say. Does anyone want to try to think of some advice for other pictures? You can get creative on this, um, whatever you think. Let's try, let's try this one. This one's pretty fun. Or this would be awful if you were in this situation. But what would you say to this guy who missed his flight or missed his plane? Anyone want to try to think of an example? Any volunteers? If you would like me to go ahead and try, I can. Okay, I can do number four if you'd like. I'm gonna move this over a little bit. 
Um, I'm, I know I jumped ahead, but I'm just going to do number four because uh, I thought it was a fun one. He should have left earlier or he was supposed to have left at six o'clock this morning and not eight o'clock or and he wouldn't have missed his flight. OK, um, hmm, how about let's do another fun one. How about this one here? This one is pretty vague. We could say a lot of different things for the uh, restaurant. Maybe something that he should order. We can do it in the present simple. So we can say he should eat this. We can do it in the future or the past, whatever you'd like. Anyone want to try number three? What should he eat or what should he order? Hmm. Anyone want to try? Okay. Uh, he should have ordered uh, a hamburger. Very good. Excellent. Well done. <laughs> Um, good. These are harder because we're doing pa um, the past, but if we want to keep it simple and we're talking about right now, we can say he should order a hamburger or whatever. So we could also make them present. Don't don't worry if you don't want to challenge yourself that much. Very good job. Thank you. Um, OK, let's ooh, let's do this one. Last one here. I think her keys are stuck in the car. So what, sh okay, Gianna, go ahead. Well, I think it could be a, she shouldn't have forgotten uh, the keys uh, in the car. She's good, she shouldn't, better to say left. Okay. The keys, good, in the car, okay. excellent. Very good. What should she do now, Gianna? Oh, sorry. What should she do now? Her keys are locked in the car. So what should she do now? Oh, well, it, she's on the, touching the window in the car. So yeah, what should she do? What advice would you tell her? Like take the bus or what do you think? Oh, uh, well, I think she should, um, um, Break. I don't know. <laughs> she should have, um, take, uh, put more attention on what <laughs> okay she should call someone oh, okay her. good all right yeah. she, she should call someone but i also like what jana said too she we can say say the future actually she should be more careful next time <laughs> good or she should call um her husband now or something like that good work everyone well done Okay, um, excellent. Any questions so far? We're okay. All right, I think we have time. Let's do one more. I, some of you guys had fantastic um, examples. Let's do one past, present, and future. Okay, how about, um, oh, I see someone here. Okay, how about this one here? Uh oh. Okay, so let's talk about the past. What should he have done? Does anyone want to make a past one about number five? Gianna, is that your hand still up? Oh, sorry. Oh, no, sorry. I can lower it. No worries. Okay, does anyone want to tell me what he should have done in the past or before this fall to be safe or to have been safe? Maybe someone should have been there. Any ideas? Yeah. He okay. He should have pay, paid more attention uh, when he was uh, climbing the ladder, I guess. Climbing. <laughs> good. Very good, David. Excellent. What about right now? What should he do? Like he fell down. Uh, what should he do? Right now, he should. He should take a pill. <laughs> take a painkiller. <laughs> he should take a painkiller. Yeah, very good. 
or pain medicine. Uh, what about the future? What should he do next time? Anyone? Take care. <laughs> Good, nice and simple. He should take care and we have to have some kind of indication that it's the future. So we should take uh, take care next time he's working or in the future or tomorrow or whatever it is. All right, guys, fantastic job with this. Um, any questions so far? No questions. We're, we're okay. All right, good job, everyone. Um, so I think we're going to now get everyone to do a bit of practice uh, together. I would love to hear some more. Um, we're going to go up to the, where are we up to here. So I would like to hear everyone do a little bit uh, more practice and get involved to use this language today. So um, instead of putting you guys in groups, which we often do here, so you can get lots of time to practice and talk to each other in English, uh, we're just going to do this together here in class. So um, I would love everyone to make some, or whoever would like to try, to make some sentences about yourself, uh, past, present, and future. So let's talk about um, past. I should have blah, 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 blah. Now let's talk about right now or in our life in general in the present simple. I have, or I actually will do ought to. I ought to do something now. And let's talk about the future. I had better, blah, 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 blah. Um, actually let's do should for this one tomorrow. Okay. Um, so let's see if we can practice making sentences now in all of these different ways. Um, so for example, hmm, I should have, um, I should have studied my Spanish harder in school. <laughs> uh, I ought to study very hard now in my life. And I should, um, I should exercise tomorrow so I feel better. Okay, does anyone else wanna to try to talk about their own lives now using uh, regret about the past, about now and the future? So all you have to do is fill in these sentences. Okay, you can take a moment, have a think about that. I can write down some examples so you can see if you need some help. Right, guys, I'd love to hear you try more here. I should have, hmm, I sh oh, I know, I should have done my laundry yesterday because now I have a lot of laundry. Two, I ought to study more. And three, I should, hmm, I should exercise tomorrow. That's something I should do. Okay, so this is about me and my life. Does anyone want to now have a turn to make some sentences about theirs? Okay. <laughs> I should drink more water. Yeah, actually, I should do that too. Very, very good. Well done. Okay, any others? And please go ahead and write it in the chat box if you would... Um, feel more comfortable doing that. Today I should sleep more hours. I should sleep more. Very good. I should sleep more hours. Yeah, good work. Anyone else want to give it a try? Mm, I should have eat more healthily. healthily. Good. If it's past, I should have eaten more healthily. Yeah, eaten is the past participle. Good work. Yeah, I, I should have eaten healthier in the past. Uh, Roger, I should study every day for three hours. That's a very um, driven of you. Very ambitious. Good job. <laughs> I should study every day for three hours. Well done. Could be, I could, I should have studied psychology. <gasps> yeah, it could be like a, mm -hmm. 
economy, for example. And not economics. Yeah, I should have studied psychology. Very good. Uh, good. Anyone else? Let's get, get a couple more examples. Please, this is your time to practice. So take time to do it now if you need to. I should have done more exercise. Mm, in the past? Yes. Good job. Yeah, that was good. I should have done. Good grammar there. Okay, any last ones? Uh, picture, it could be. Oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead, please. Yeah, what was that? Lita was talking, sorry. I ought to eat um, healthy, healthy foods. Yeah, I ought to eat healthy food, like in my life now. Absolutely. And sorry, who is the and who else wanted to answer? Yeah, teach. yeah please yeah. go ahead. Oh, well, I shouldn't have asked her a favor. Ah, oh, yeah, very good. Well done. I see a couple of examples here. I should be more constant in my English studies. Yeah, we all should be. I ought to read more Engl in English. Yeah, we all should. That's a good one. And watch TV in English too. As an airline pilot, I should have descended rapidly due to depressurization in flight. Well, I have no idea. <laughs> I am not an airplane fly pilot, yes, but I'm an I believe pilot. You. you're yeah. an airline pilot. Super cool. Yes, uh, yes, yes. Well, I'm glad you know what to do then, because we all trust you <laughs> when yes, you fly. Of course, yes. Very because cool. Due to a depressurization, uh, we have to descend rapidly because oh. all passengers has at minimum 22 minutes to use uh, oxygen masks. That makes it sound scary. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is ma it's mandatory to all aircrafts. Oh, okay, yes, cool. The, yes, the maximum uh, time to use uh, oxygen mask for passengers uh, is the 22 minutes. Oh, wow. Speci it's now a I regulation. Yes, it's an international regulation to all companies. Very interesting. Cool, Arturo. Well, now I learned something today. <laughs> All right, guys, um, we do have to finish up now. It's about the end here. We have lots more fun activities and lots of group work um, and chances for everyone to practice what we've learned by making fun questions and answers with these advice models. Um, of course, with a regular class here at Canaway, we would have another 45 minutes, so we would have more time to really practice and get everyone talking and engaged. And I really love chatting with you guys and hearing your stories, so we'd also have more time for that. Unfortunately, not today, though. Okay, so does everyone feel good about the modals we looked at today? And does anyone have any questions about anything? Don't feel shy. You're good. All right. Good. Thumbs up. Great. Okay. Well done. Okay, everybody. Well, that is it for our modals on advice and suggestions lesson today. I hope you enjoyed it and learned a little bit of something. And I hope you got some time to practice and use what we learned uh, in class. And I hope you will continue in the future. And I really hope I can see some of you guys again one day soon. <laughs>